Hey everyone, Vanessa here to talk to you about creating comics in Lucid. First off, why did I select this topic for today? There are two main reasons. The first reason is that when I was in the classroom, I used this to support all of the different content areas that was that I was teaching. And I taught elementary, so as we know, I was teaching all of them. So this should be beneficial to you no matter what you are teaching. And second of all, I loved when students were creating authentic work in the classroom. My favorite activities were when they were creating something that highlighted their personality. Every student was turning in something different and to see the smiles and how proud the students were when they were submitting their final product that always made my heart warm and I really loved how deeply the students needed to think in order to create those final products. So throughout this video we're going to take a quick look at different ways that you could use this in your classroom for the different content areas and then we're going to take a brief look at a how-to so we can help you get started. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into a few of those examples. Here you can see the students were creating a comic to investigate character perspectives using the book Charlotte's Web. So all of the different characters were supposed to share how they felt about Wilbur so you could see their different perspectives. For example, Uncle Homer thinks of Wilbur as dinner for Christmas. As you know, Fern loves him and thinks of him as a pet. Templeton just wants him for all the yummy scraps of food. And then that old sheep is annoyed by that young, adorable pig. In this activity, you can see the students were studying the civil rights movement. Each of the students were tasked with researching one of the famous figures from that time and then creating a comic to share their life story. So here you can see the student was researching the life of Rosa Parks and through this comic strip they were able to break down each of the major important events from Rosa Parks life and why she was so important to that civil rights movement. Then when the students were done they were able to share this out so all the students could learn about the different important figures related related to the civil rights movement with their classmates. In this next example, the teacher used the comic strip idea in order to spice up their typical vocabulary lesson for science. Um, so instead of just writing down definitions or completing your Foursquare related to vocabulary, they had their students create comic strips, which is much more exciting and fun. And the students got super engaged and I absolutely love the final products. So you here you can see three words they were studying. They were studying camouflage, omnivore, and extinct. And so you can see in the first one they have, now you see me. And then our chameleon is camouflaged, now you don't. Here I am. So you can kind of see a funny explanation of being camouflaged. I love the bear one. I'm hungry. I want fish. Ooh, berries. Explaining the word omnivore. And then finally, I'm the last dodo bird. Oh dear, he was the last one. Explaining the word extinct. So super fun way to get students excited about their science vocabulary. And again, they can share this out with their other students and they can see different ways and compare and contrast. Well, how did you do camouflage? How did you do omnivore and extinct? So they can kind of really see the differences on how they're explaining their vocabulary through a fun comic strip. In this example, the students were reading Romeo and Juliet and the teacher wanted to have a fun twist on a standard story retell. So they had the students create a fun comic strips to pull out and retell all the major events from Romeo and Juliet. So here you can see they've included a couple fun images. So instead of just seeing the regular Romeo and Juliet um, two families fighting. They have two kids with lightsabers. They also have cartoons of the king kicking Romeo out. So it just adds a little bit more spice to that typical story retail. Um, and then it also highlights that the students need to pull out those major events because they're not writing a full paragraph. They're just summarizing each of those main events. And in a comic strip, you only have the space to be able to pull out those major events and really summarize them down to one or two sentences. In this example, the teacher had the students create a comic strip about fractions. This way students were able to come up with their own examples about fractions so that the teacher could really get in and see what the students understood related to what they had learned 
about fractions. So here you can say, hey there, my name is Sam and I'm planning a party. I am so excited to invite all of my friends to my house. And then he talks about how he, what fraction of pizza he needs with pepperoni, what fraction of his cake should be vanilla. And then finally, and most importantly, what are those fractions of items he's gonna put in his gift bag? And then I love how the students then can share this out and they can share their fraction stories with the rest of the group so that the students are again learning from each other because they're all creating authentic work since these are fractions that they are creating from scratch to share their learning. Okay, and our final example is coming from a history classroom where the teacher wanted the students to analyze a political cartoon from history and then reimagine it um, for today's audience. So then they had at the bottom an ex explanation of their reimagination. So here you can see they were focusing on the old join or die political cartoon, which was all about during the um, French expansion and then later during the British Revolutionary War, meaning that all of the states had to come together in order to be victorious um, in those different war efforts. So in this one, the student wanted to think about being better together. So they have all of these different people coming from diverse locations with different ingredients, and they realize that, you know, separately they can't do as much as they can when they come together and they can create a beautiful, tasty cake. Now that we've had a chance to look at a few different lesson ideas, let's take a look at how you can get started using this in the classroom. You'll notice that here we're looking at the comic book template. You can find this by searching comic in the Lucid dashboard template library. You'll notice that it starts off with a bunch of speech bubbles. These are speech bubbles then that you can copy and paste and use to add to any of the other layouts that you would like. And you'll notice that you can double click and you can type directly inside any of these speech bubbles to start writing your content. Now, let's take a second to look through all of the different options that you can choose from. So you'll notice here in layout one and layout two, you have a nice, simple black and white layout, which makes it easy to print this out for students. There are a lot of students who like doing this using Lucid and doing it digitally. And then there are some students who also like to do it by hand. So you can easily print this out for students, allowing them to choose the way that they would like to complete the activity. You just select file, come down to export and select PDF, and you can download any of these layouts to print for your students. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a few more vibrant options for the rest of the layouts. Now that you've seen a few layout options, let's go over a few tips. Your first tip is copying and pasting these speech bubbles. So let's say I like this speech bubble. I'm going to click on it so it's all highlighted in blue. Do Command or Control C to copy it. And then just come to your blank page or the layout in which you'd like to add it to. And then do Command or Control V to paste it onto your screen. Then you'll notice you just double click right inside and you can start writing. You'll also notice that you might want it to be a different direction. So if you hover over, you'll see the curved arrows and you can turn it so that you could have your speech bubble go in different directions on your board. You'll also notice that you can copy and paste the speech bubbles and the layouts onto a separate document if you would like as well. So let's say I just wanna pick one of these layouts. You can right click and delete all of the pages you don't want. Or if you're going and using layouts into a new document, you can click on the layout that you want, click and drag to highlight all of the layout, and then use that same command or control C to copy and then come into your blank document and then use command or control V to paste that new layout. And then while it's all highlighted, you can just click and drag to format it and put it right on that one page. 
The next trick we're going to talk about is shapes in use. You'll notice on the left hand side, any shape that is already in a document will go into your shapes in use. So if you search and add an image, if you pull out and customize a shape, they'll come into shapes in use. And then all you need to do then is click and drag out from any of these shapes onto your canvas. So it's another quick shortcut for adding those shapes onto the canvas. So as a teacher, if you're creating a template, you could pre-populate the shapes onto a shapes page, and then the students don't need to copy and paste them back and forth. They can just pull them out from the shapes in use. You'll notice that any of the Lucid shapes allow you to write directly inside them. If you notice that it's not a lucid shape and it's an image you've pulled in, you can just use the text box feature to click and drag the text box and then you could write the text box on top of any shape that you've pulled out from an image search. The next tip we're going to go over is the image search. You'll notice that I use the image search a lot when I'm adding cartoon characters to my comics. So if you click on the magnifying glass, you'll notice that you have a search icon to search Bing, safe search. My biggest tip for the search is adding the word cartoon before anything that you're looking through and you'll get a lot of images that will work inside of a comic structure. So if I look up a cartoon cat, and then I'm not gonna stick on shapes, I'm gonna come over to images and icons, and now you'll see I have a variety of cartoon cats that I can use for my comic. So I like this guy, I can click and drag him, and you'll notice that this image actually has a transparent background. Some images won't have transparent backgrounds and some will. So then you can resize it to fit on side, inside of your comic book shape, and then you can search and add any of these other images. Then you'll notice once I have my characters on my board, I could write directly inside of the shape to add the text. Or I could pull out and search for a speech bubble and I could add that speech bubble onto my shape. Simply by copying and pasting it onto my new page. Along with searching cartoon animals, cartoon characters, you can also search for more speech bubbles. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna search for speech bubbles and then you can pull out any of these speech bubbles onto your board. These, however, will not come with text already included, so that's when you'll want to come through and drag out that text box on top of your speech bubble so that you can add text to an image. Don't forget to utilize the paint can to customize the color of any of your Lucid shapes. Use the outline tool to change the color of your outline, the design of your outline, the thickness of your outline, and then finally, don't forget your font, size, and other text features. You'll also notice that I have several tabs at the bottom, so you can have a comic book that is multiple pages long. When your students are done with their comic strips, they can share it with you using that share link. They could also print it out by selecting File, Export, and they can export each of their pages as a PDF so that they have a printed version of their comic book that they can share with other students. I loved putting these in our class library, would print them out, and then we'd have them in our shared library so everybody could read through everybody else's comics. Now you can send this entire comic book template out to your students so they can look through all of the layouts and decide how they would like to do their assignment. You could just send them to a blank page so that they start from scratch to create their own comic, or you can actually choose and customize a template that you would like to push out through Google Classroom, Canvas, or Schoology. That way you can set some parameters for your students as they're working. So for example, let's say as the teacher, I'm looking through and I would like to use this template. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna come through and I'm going to right click and delete all of the pages that I don't want. Then I'm gonna come in and I'm going to make some customizations. So maybe there are some specific things that I would like them to include in their comic strip. 
For example, maybe the students are coming up with their own creative writing comic strips and they are coming up with their own stories. So as the teacher, you might add, say, I want you to use this template. So you're going to have a story that specifically has eight different events. So then as the teacher, you could come in and you could fill in, for example, I want this to be the setting and character introduction. I would like this to be the first incident in the story and then so on and so forth. You could say the rising action, the climax, falling action, the resolution. That way you can create this with some parameters and guidance for the students. Once you've gotten the template exactly the way you'd like it for students, you could highlight and lock some things down. So for example, if I use this lock in the upper right hand corner, I might not want my students to use to be able to change the size and position, but I am going to allow them to change the style and the content so that way they can add a little bit of their own personal flair, but I want to restrict them to a specific story that only has these specific elements involved. Once you're done with the template, then you can easily push this out through Google Classroom, Canvas, or Schoology. If you don't know how to do that, go to our, our Lucid for Education YouTube library, and there's a whole playlist on integrations, and it'll walk you through step-by-step -step instructions about how you can send templates out to all of your students so they'll each get their own copy to work on. As always, I am here to help. If you have any questions or need any help with creating comics using Lucid, feel free to email me anytime. Thanks for watching today's PD and I hope you learned something exciting that you can use in your classroom.